Big day in the world of the NBA, folks. You guys all probably know by now. LeBron James opting out of his final two years in Miami today. Certainly the beginning of what could be a lot of change or a lot of restructuring for the Miami Heat. LeBron obviously, like I said, had two years left on his deal, has chosen to opt out. Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh can also do the same. Carmelo Anthony has already opted out of his contract with the New York Knicks. So a lot of prime free agents out here and here with uh, my NBA Scoops of the Week here live on the Joe Passarelli Show. Joe Passarelli here. What's good, peeps? But yeah, LeBron James, decision part two, here we come. Certainly he could stay in Miami. Um, I think he really wants to play with Carmelo. Him and Par Carmelo seem like a logical pairing. However, I do think it's very disrespectful to Dwayne Wade to just push him out. I mean, maybe try to get him at a cheaper deal. He is obviously not as good as he used to be. He's on the decline. The health has caught up with him. But at the same time, he's been loyal to the Miami Heat. He took less money for LeBron and Chris Bosh to come a couple years ago. I think it's a shame how Dwayne Wade's kind of getting treated here. My two cents on that. But LeBron, he's opted out. Where's he going to go? Uh, obviously some rumors have at the Los Angeles Lakers. I think this would be silly. I mean, yeah, old man Kobe. You really don't have a lot there. I think L.A., I think Boston is a lot more of a, sh a secure place for the future. And I'm not talking about four free agents, but just over the overall structure and foundation of the, of the franchise and situation. I don't think the Los Angeles Lakers, I mean, unless they really strike gold with the seventh pick, I don't think are really primed and ready to be where LeBron James wants to be in winning championships, even that is, even if that is with an accelerated Kobe, accelerated age, that is. But uh, Atlanta, also another option. I highly doubt that. Cleveland. Apparently, LeBron's wife treated yesterday something about um, home sweet home of, of Akron. Cleveland's interesting. They have the number one overall pick. They certainly can do a lot of different things, and LeBron James certainly seems logical. They have Kyrie Irving there already. They have a foundation of good young talent, which they've drafted in this number one overall pick, which they are shopping. Whether they get adequate compensation with a lot of role players that they could pair with LeBron or take Andrew Wiggins, either way, it seems like a very positive situation for LeBron. Uh, for Cleveland, Chicago, an option. He did snub Chicago and New York last time around. But I think the most interesting option, and what I think really could happen, and this could benefit both franchises, is a potential sign and trade with LeBron going to the Clippers and playing with Chris Paul. I think that's highly possible. I could see Blake Griffin being part of this deal. I really could. I mean, look at how invested LeBron is. LeBron was in the playoffs. He was ready to take a stand to support uh, the L.A. Clippers, just like everyone else, in, in protesting with the warm-up uniforms and all the things that the social media and the protests of the fallout of Donald Sterling and how it negatively affected the Clippers. Seems like LeBron's sitting there looking at it. Doc Rivers as the coach. Stable. Probably the best coach you're going to play with besides po uh, Greg Popovich. And Chris Paul there. And a litany of other talent. I'd certainly believe that Blake Griffin could be traded. But imagine if you had the pairing of Blake Griffin, Chris Paul, and LeBron. And obviously you'd probably have to trade DeAndre Jordan and some other pieces, but... I think a sign and trade with LeBron going to the Los Angeles Clippers is highly possible. You look at Pat Riley, criticized LeBron last week, talking about how the Lakers would have came back the next year in the 80s had they lost to the Celtics or other situations in the 80s. You don't just run away from a team that could have won four straight championships. Obviously lost to Dallas and won the last two against um, Oklahoma City. And... Um, of course, lost to San Antonio this past year, um, so certainly, and they, they beat San Antonio last year, so San Antonio got them in the, in the revenge this year, so two and two in a four-year stretch, not bad for the Miami Heat, but you sat there and boasted, not five, not six, not seven, now you're opting out, you could mend the fences with Cleveland, and, and certainly they would love to have you back, despite the fact that numerous Cleveland fans burned jersey, jerseys and, you know, swore never to have any allegiance with LeBron ever again. 
but certainly interesting. And here's how the Celtics factor into this. I wanted to work this into the equation for all my green teamers and all my diehard Celtics out there. we got the draft coming up. Stay tuned to this channel for draft coverage with myself, Mr. Combine, Steve Mall, as well as Jason Jasnowski, my co-host from the Strike Zone. Got to be some in-depth stuff. Could be recorded live from Snookers, maybe right here, live from Casa de Joe. Certainly, many options possible, but you will get some content and some fallout with the NBA draft live in this channel. But the Celtics have apparently inquired about trading up for the number one pick and the possibility of drafting Andrew Wiggins. Perhaps the Kevin Love situation cooling off, looking like he'll either stay in Minnesota or get traded to Golden State. So the Celtics looking at other options, and this would be a splash. Obviously, you'd probably have to trade 617 and possibly Jeff Green, which, by all means, Jeff Green, throw him right in there. If we were to keep Sullinger and get the number one overall pick in Wiggins, um, you know, and, and, and with Rondo, would that be enough a pairing uh, of maybe Sullinger and Wiggins, two very good young players? This can happen. Jeff Green makes a lot of sense to put in this deal. We want to get rid of him and his salary. They need a small forward after the wall dang left. And then they get two picks on top of it, 6 and 17. They get Julius Randle or a boatload of other players, despite Julius Randle skipping out on a workout for the Celtics today to go to a, a, G, a GQ uh, interview or something. Way to snub the Celtics. Rumors have it that he may be having some backdoor deals in Julius Randle to hope to go to the Lakers. More power to you. The Lakers are a great franchise, but... Again, shenanigans, players avoiding the Celtics for these sexier locations like L.A. and Miami. It gets frustrating if you're from Boston. I know Bill Simmons and other people would echo that sentiment. But a lot of NBA news today, folks. The Celtics interested in trading for the number one overall pick. And, of course, the lead story today, LeBron James opting out of his deal with the Miami Heat. Going to be a free agent. The Options Him Decision Part 2. Here we go. Everybody loves a sequel. and We're going to get a sequel with LeBron Decision Part 2. Let's see where he takes his talents this time. For another edition of the Joe Passarelli Show, this is Joe Passarelli. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Stay tuned for some more wrestling content today and news, sports, opinions, whatever. We got it here live. Joe Passarelli Channel. Joe Passarelli Show. Subscribe.